Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be learning the three principles that led to this Ethereum project called the Saudis to make over $500,000 off of secondary royalties on a free mint collection. There's a lot we can learn from this project that will be of great value if you're currently in the process of launching your NFT collection. Now, before we get into the three principles, if this is the first time we meet, my name is Leon Aboud. I'm the founder and CEO of Unfungible.xyz, an NFT strategic consulting and marketing agency aimed at helping NFT projects successfully market their collection. So if you ever find yourself in need of marketing help or you still have any questions after watching this video, then feel free to book your free consultation call by clicking on the link in the description of this video so you can learn how you can get involved with us, how we can help you and how we can help your project. On a side note, if you're the type of person that's a visual learner, I do invite you to check out my Twitter where I do post the written format of my marketing analysis and a lot more things I do observe within the NFT space. I do post those in written format on Twitter. So do check that out. My username is, hey, this is Leon. And do send me a DM if you find value in my content or just want to say hi. All right. With that said, let's get into the video. So as we've, men we've mentioned, there are three principles that led to the incredible success of this project. The first one, which we're going to be breaking down one by one as we progress in this video, is very solid branding. So the, this project's branding was very meta. It's trending right now, the type of branding that they went after. And they never broke the act, even at a moment, which I'm going to be showing you where they kind of could have very easily broken the act and shifted the way they communicate with people. The second thing that led to the success was a strong circle that kick-started the project's hype. The founders of this project definitely weren't alone when they started this, and you're going to be seeing how this helped them. The third and final principle to this project's success was very strong connections and ambassadors in the crypto and NFT space that led this project to really moon and become the number one trending Ethereum project um, for, I believe, one or two days on OpenSea. So as we can see right here, the Saudis made it to the number one trending collection on OpenSea, overcoming CryptoPunks, Bored Ape Kennel Club, and Bored Ape Yacht Club. So right here, we can see they have a 5,555 uh, collection size with the current floor price of 0.69 Ethereum. And they made a total volume of 6.9 thousand Ethereum. A quick search, and we can see in the details that the creator royalty is 7.5%. So if we do the math, 6.9 thousand Ethereum times 7.5%, we see that these guys made over 500 Ethereum, which translates to $500,000 plus at the current price of Ethereum. On Twitter, we can see that they have 113,000 followers. And on Discord, they have 100 and 16,000 server members. So we mentioned that the first principle was solid branding. And I'm gonna be right now taking you through a series of tweets that I bookmarked that really show you how they were able, what type of branding they were able to pull off. Now for you to understand the first principle, which is a very good branding, we first need to understand what is the current meta in the NFT space? What is currently trending and what is currently working? And right now what is working, especially on Ethereum, are meme projects. So projects that bring a form of humor and form of entertainment into the space. We've seen this with the last case study that I made, which is God Hates NFTs. The God Hates NFTs were able to build their entire project and again, make it become number one trending project for a couple of days on Ethereum because they were able to build their brand around a meme that was circulating in the Ethereum space. If you haven't watched that case study, I would definitely recommend you do because uh, there's a lot of principles we can learn from that as well. Similarly with the Saudis, these people were able to build a project that is fun, that is built around humor, and we can very easily understand that they, it was built by uh, people based in Saudi Arabia around the typical you know, Arab uh, oil money stereotype. But they were able to do it in a way that wasn't rude and that didn't come off as racist in any way. I've bookmarked a couple of tweets that we're going to be going over just for you to see the type of branding posts that they made. And especially by the end, there's an important part of this where I'm going to be showing you a piece where they had to deal with a hacker. 
So right here on June 24th, we can see the first ever tweet made by the Saudis, uh, which, says, which, say, which says 5,555 Saudis are coming to your bags soon, inshallah. Right here, we can see on the same day, the next tweet was this image of Michael Scheichler um, wearing the traditional outfit of Saudi Arabia. And it says, Mashallah, Michael Scheichler. For those of you who don't know Mr. Scheichler, he is the CEO and founder of MicroStrategy, a Silicon Valley-based software company. Big, big deal. Uh, and is a big proponent of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. If you continue scrolling, we can see the day after on June 25th, they opened their Discord for the first time. First 500 people to join Discord get the designated Sheikh title. Such designation and titles are Sheikhs to a free mint and access to all luxuries the Yad has to offer. On June 26th, they photoshopped an image of Elon Musk saying that he had a meeting with the Saudis and they are indeed buying here. And the tweet says, Alhamdulillah, please, pleasure to meet our dear brother, Elon Musk. Right here, they made a tweet that I find pretty funny, which was a Photoshop tweet of the Foreign Ministry of Saudi Arabia that says that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is proposing a draft order to offer green passport to all the Saudis NFT holders. Right here, the tweet says the sheikhs at the Saudi NFTs hold a special status in the kingdom. Right here, we have the former an image of the former king of Saudi Arabia, Abdullah, Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, that says Max Bidding. And this was kind of the um, slogan of this project, Max Bidding, which basically translates to putting gas prices at maximum when trying to mint uh, the Saudis. So right here on June 27, we can see that they tweeted, soon our oil profits will flow into Bitcoin and gush the price upward like the wells of Gawar. Right here on the 28th, another meme. And right here again, another meme that's Vladimir Putin and the King of Saudi. On June 30th, they have allotted another 20 whitelists that says the kingdom was feeling generous today and decided to grant 200 new whitelist roles as an oil executive, mashallah. Join Discord, quote this tweet and tag Max Bidding, tag five friends, fill this form when complete. So on July 1st, they have announced the day of their mint, which was happening on July 9th. Now, one thing I want to point out, which again fortifies the branding of this project, is that they timed the, the mint of this project impeccably. They did an incredible job because July 9th is the second day of Eid al-Adha which is the second biggest religious holiday in Islam. And Saudi Arabia is actually the capital city, the Islamic capital city, especially for Eid al-Adha, where a lot of Muslims travel to uh, Saudi Arabia to celebrate um, this holiday. So the tweet reads, our oil is flowing, our thobs are fresh, our dates are sweet, and our sheikhs are assembled. July 9th is when 1.7 billion Muslims around the world celebrate Eid al-Adha. And we are celebrating by dropping the Saudis. The Saudis are max bidding. Join us on Discord. Right here, another meme. And it says, over 12,000 Discord members in only three days, mashallah, join our kingdom, Discord. Right here, another meme. This one I did find very, very funny and very cute. It says... Uh, it's a picture of Snoop Dogg, obviously, that says, may my homies, inshallahs, turn into Alhamdulillah. So translating that in, in English terms, it says, may my homies' wishes turn into thank gods. Right here on July 4th, so five days before the mint, we can see that they dropped the pre-mint link for their oil executives and sheikhs. And you click here and it takes you to the Saudis pre-mint page. So again, right here, July 9th, and Eid al-Adha, 5,000 Saudis are coming to Ethereum blockchain, max bidding. Uh, again, fortifying the whole like Bitcoin, uh, crypto uh, theme. The Saudis come out tomorrow, July 9th. Will you be max bidding? And right here, they have an image of Jeff Bezos that says infinite resources. This is funny. And this is actually Du Quan the founder of Luna. And what this tweet says is the kingdom is looking for the Harami, which translates to thief Du Quan. Anybody seen him? And we can see right here, Du Quan dressed in the Sheikh outfit uh, behind bars. 
Now on Discord, the first thing that I saw, which I found very funny, was that there was an oil channel on Discord only dedicated to the price of oil. You know, even though people don't care about that, this is there to fortify the brand. And it's those small things when you plan them right there that will create that sense of branding and community around your project. Now, right here, this is the public announcement that I wanted you to see on Discord. So on the day of the mint, there has been someone that exploited the smart contract of the Saudis. So let's read this. Salam, you will have a second chance. We identified a malicious attack during the mint. Contracts were used to attack. The attack has been identified and is being under investigation. The perpetrator will be investigated further and we will work with the rural guard to make sure he receives maximum lashes for his act. We have recovered 217 um, NFTs and we will be making things right for the community. We will be hosting a pre-mint raffle for the community for the remaining NFTs that we are able to recover. Thank you for the support. It is more than expected. Don't, don't F with the Saudi. Right here, we can see they published an image of the hacker po posting his pieces on the um, uh, on, on the floor. And we can see the floor price is not reflective of the actual floor price. We have identified the hacker and give him max punishment. He is locked from selling, but not from listing. So he is dumping floor way below floor. He is freaking out. The Saudis are max bidding. And right here, this is really an example. You can see right here, 1,300 uh, laugh emojis. And you can see how they were able to make their community laugh, something that could actually uh, create a lot of FUD in the space. Because they were able to follow, they remained consistent with their branding, with the way they speak, max punishment. You know, they're using maximum lashes. Uh, they remained on act, even when something went wrong. And that was kind of able to save themselves a lot of FUD. Because right here, I was able to go to the perpetrator that was able to get their hands on um, 200 plus NFTs of the Saudi. And we can see that this guy right here did a lot of money. This guy made over, I believe I read somewhere on Twitter that this person made over $200,000 just because he was able to mint 200 NFTs. Look at that. Look at how many sales he was able to make. We can see transfers. One Ethereum, one Ethereum, one Ethereum, hundreds of transactions. This person, like, good for them. 3.5 Ethereum, you know, 4 Ethereum right here. So that hacker might have been able, might, they, they through some magic were able to block that hacker from selling. But by the time they were able to do this, that person made some bang. So that's the first principle, guys. What is currently working in the NFT space is meme projects. And that's important to know if you're strategizing, if you're currently in the process of strategizing your NFT collection. What meme, what idea, what humor can you build your collection around? Now, the second principle is a very strong circle that kickstarted the project. And we're going to be seeing that. But why did I put that in? A big part of the reason I put that in here is because I see a lot of projects struggling with the very first tweet that they make, with getting that initial traction, that initial momentum. Projects really do get stuck to get that organic reach, building those first couple hundred or thousand followers. And solutions to that are usually paying influencers, are collaborating with other projects, or they're doing it the organic way. And we're going to see in this project, they were able to do it through a community that they already had before this project. So right here, remember, this is the first tweet that was made on the Saudis. And what we're going to do is we're going to do, go on the retweets of this post, and we're gonna go back to the very first retweet that happened in chronological order, because we wanna understand what exactly are the first few catalysts that led to this project really exploding and becoming what it is today. So right here, very quickly, we can see the type of persona that engaged with this tweet very early on. We can see Majin al Silik with 40,000 on Twitter. We can see another bro from Saudi Arabia, OX Alex. We can see Yalla right here. Right here, we can see um, ZKM with the Saudi Arabia flag as well. Right here, we can see Barefoot with the NFT image. Right here, we can see Moonbag.east. Right here, we can see a bunch of people that look like they aped into the projects. We have Sheikh Pani Al Majid. We have Liakos. We have a lot of PFPs. The founder of this project had access to an alpha group or a niche 
community of crypto traders or NFT traders in Saudi Arabia. This is similar to me, who is part of Web 3.0 Montreal Telegram group with over 400 members um, of people that work in the Web 3 space. It's similar to me telling these people out there like, hey guys, I just launched my collection about Canada. Um, go like and interact and I'll give you guys free whitelist spots. You know, and I do believe this is what the founder of this project did for a specific group that was niche within his community. And that really allowed this project to get off the ground without spending any marketing dollar and to build that initial loyal following of people that are engaging, reacting, retweeting to all the tweets that are going to come later on uh, on this project. All right, so we have seen right now the first principle, solid branding. Second one, which is a strong circle that kickstarted the project and allowed them to start exploding organically without paying any marketing dollars. The third thing that I want to mention that really is what sparked that project to make those $500,000 of secondary volume is that they had a strong connections of ambassadors in the crypto and the NFT space. So right here, I have bookmarked a couple of tweets where you see big brand influencers and ambassadors, especially in the crypto space, shield the connection. One thing this tells me is that the founders of this project were very well connected within the crypto sphere because 90% of the influencers that we're going to be seeing right here are crypto, have a crypto background and not necessarily an NFT background. So right here, we can see the first tweet on the first day, June 24th. We can see our brother sinking BitMEX meeting with the Saudis, say mashallah. So right here, Chim Zhu has 80,000 followers. And it says, the Saudis are not only buying all your spots or your spot Bitcoin and Ethereum, they also bought all your tech stocks. The haram lifestyle of the West led to emotionally and irrational behavior. The halal lifestyle is the pious, allow them to buy the blood and create the multi-generational wealth. And right here, we can see Majin al with 40,000 followers tweet, soon Byzantium will be overthrown by Al-Bolas. My brothers in faith are buying, pagan nihilists are resisting. Prosperity is coming for Al-Bolas. And right here, Elon Musk with a Bitcoin coin. Right here, we can see they posted a picture, again, by Majin al-Silik. Posted a picture of the Sheikh. Um, this picture was actually taken in Expo 2020 in Dubai. I was there this uh, December, last December. I was at the exact same spot. And you can see the arc of Expo 2020. Right here, we have Miles J Creative with 50,000 followers on uh, Twitter. You can see Bitcoin investor tweeting sailor is fully leveraged and tapped. Zoo is down, but shall rise again. 2020 will be the story of a parabolic move driven by the Saudis. Six-figure Bitcoin, God wills it. Bitcoin. Again, Miles J. Creative. Those who don the Saudi flag will be invited to the 100K party in Riyadh. Drafting a guest list now. Drop your preferred name below. Crypto Bitlord right here with 216,000 followers. We can see new, new PFP, the Saudis. Bull of Binance Street, 350,000 on Twitter. And buying, don't know about Saudis. So here we can see Madden, um, 231K on Twitter and is involved within the Bitcoin community. Uh, we can see Mashallah Sister Maryam, welcome to the kingdom to the kingdom right here she replies saying my name is not Maryam, but i will accept the invitation into the kingdom anyway and right here velvet maxi with 100k on twitter the sheikh have, have arrived to defend 20,000. imagine sawan saudi verse with 150k again bitcoin um did you buy bitcoin in on and right here, this is actually something that made a lot of noise within the NFT space. It was by it was a picture of basically Farouk, um, a big Twitter influencer. Mashallah, Sheikh Farouk bin Bandal Al Saud, we welcome you to the kingdom. And right here, we can see Farouk uh, replied back by saying, "I'm logging off Twitter for the day. Too much Twitter for me." Right here, legendary collaboration with Hasbullah. Uh, of course, you know Hezbollah. He's been over the place 100K. Hezbollah at the Saudis, inshallah, to the moon. We welcome our beloved brother Hezbollah into our kingdom. 
right here we can see the weekend.ethereum 170,000k alhamdulillah lil moon lambo the saudis inshallah to the moon we can see trader um, sz 400k again uh, let's go right here we can see crypto poseidon with 50k it is time new profile picture we can see mashallah the colossal gates of our king kingdom are open to you icebergy with 100k and right here we can see Cines that lens with 30k and icebergy we can see we answer to that tweet by saying shukran which means thank you small thing 200k on twitter again retweeting Lupify, I call the Saudis 200k. Pentoshi, 600k. Right here we can see Kingdom, King of all Korean Jews. I, for one, embrace our new Saudi overload. Alhamdulillah. Don't don't follow Shardi B if you don't if you hate money. 200k again, Bitcoin affiliated accounts. Don't make me do this. These guys Saudi gave this to me. Their free mint is tomorrow, details below. And finally, we have Moon is hearing things, 200K. So basically, we can see the level of connections these guys had to be able to pull this off. This wasn't luck. These people were well connected and probably paid a lot of those influencers big money to get that out there. But this eventually led them to the success of their collection. So this is it. We've made it to the end. Three principles, three fundamentals that led to this project's success. Solid branding, build their brand around the meme, around something fun, entertaining. Number two, strong circle that kickstarted the project without them needing to pay any money. And third of all, strong connections and ambassadors in the crypto and NFT space that led to the project exploding out of nowhere. I hope you enjoyed this case study, my friends. Remember, there's always opportunities in the NFT space. No marketing strategy is the same for any projects. Some projects like the Saudis get very creative and come up with something that is unique, entertaining and differentiating that allows them. Other, other projects follow the more straightforward formula, especially on Solana that is currently working. If you see most of my Solana case studies, they all follow the same exact step-by-step -step formula. So find what works for you, find what fits the budget that you have, the marketing budget that you have, and I wish you luck. I'll be seeing you in the very next video, my friends. Take care.